called Game Pass, where you can get hundreds of games for just $9.99 a month. And now they're buying up game publishers so they can put their games on the service. Microsoft has bought so many game studios that they now own Doom, Wolfenstein, Quake, Halo, Call of Duty, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Diablo, Hearthstone, Overwatch, Starcraft, Warcraft, World of Warcraft, Psychonauts, Guitar Hero, Dishonored, Minecraft, Gears of War, Tony Hawk, and Zork. Remember Zork? It doesn't matter if Call of Duty is also available on PlayStation, if you can get it for $9.99 instead of $70 and get hundreds of other games too, that's what you're going to do. The deal is just too good to pass up. Now I can hear what you're going to say next. You're saying Sony and Nintendo just need to make their own Game Pass competitors and make their own games $9.99 a month. Here's the problem. I don't think they can do that. I think Microsoft is taking a massive loss on Game Pass, and they're able to do that because they are literally 10 times bigger than Sony and Nintendo combined. Nintendo makes video games and playing cards. Sony makes video games and headphones. Microsoft makes video games, the operating system that every computer in the world runs on, and the web services that every website in the world run on. They are one of the biggest companies in the world. And that means that they can use their massive cash reserves to subsidize their video game service forever. It's the Amazon strategy. They can take a loss on every single video game they sell through Game Pass forever until they have wiped out the competition and uh -oh. Sony and Not Nintendo listening? cannot do shit about it. Actually, I should say I think Nintendo will be fine because Nintendo has Mario and Zelda and everyone loves Mario and Zelda, but I think Sony is fucked. Like, Sony can't afford to make the new God of War or Horizon Zero Dawn game just 10 bucks. They need those games to be $70 for them to make a profit that year. Whereas Microsoft is able to lose money indefinitely, so indefinitely that they can sell the damn console and Game Pass for just $25 a month. Now that's an amazing deal, but it's one of those deals that we might later say, ooh, that deal was a little bit too good to be true, because it could mean that Microsoft wipes out all the competition in the video game space and then is able to jack the prices up on us and also make games that are a lot worse. And let's not forget that all this consolidation naturally is going to lead to layoffs and worse conditions for workers. Microsoft isn't trying to be the Netflix of games, they're trying to be the Amazon of games. They want to use their massive cash advantage to undercut and dominate the entire game industry. That is bad for video game makers and video game players, and as someone who loves video games, I'm worried. So I've been thinking a lot about how... Alright, so now I want you to think about that, because now the reason I'm showing that is not that I give a damn about video games, but what we see is that a lot of the markets or a lot of things out here... They're trying to move to these monopolies. So we see Microsoft moving into a strategy to take over a whole area. Like Amazon is, you know, Amazon. I mean, I don't know if y'all know this in your neighborhoods. Amazon is pushing, pushed a lot of businesses out of business. They, they didn't took over. They didn't just took over a whole market. You know what I'm saying? They go, are going to be effectively be able to make decisions that would influence your life. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with Facebook. Facebook is able to influence your life. You know what I'm saying? So now Microsoft want to put themselves in a position to influence your life. You know what I'm saying? So we got to start watching when these when these big moves are being made. And a lot of us, we're caught up in who having a baby by who. Rather than, you know what I'm saying, who getting billions with who. You know what I'm saying? Who making trillions with who. Right? But anyway... It's time for us to get into anime. Are you ready, baby? Can you um can you help me out real quick? Can we get straight into what we need to get into? You ready? Okay, cool. Let's go. It's the proverb time. Proverb time. Proverb time. Proverb time. Proverb time. Let's kick it. Proverb of the day. Proverb of the day, and it's a very good one. Here you go. The proverb of the day. Very quick. Very simple. Listen up. You cannot lean on air. That's the proverb of the day. Tell me, what does it mean to you? It's the proverb. Uh, all right. Proverb, Wonder Woman Choir. Y'all get paid pretty good. Y'all need to be singing on time. All right, here we go. Now, family, that's the writing prop. Proverb of the day. The writing prop for 216-22-6. Ujima Day is you cannot lean on air. Hmm. What's the air in your life, family, that you're trying to lean on? Next, anime, can you go? Cue us up, cue us up, baby. Cue us up. What's going on? Here we go. 
Here we go. What is it? Oh, there you go. Folk tale time. It's a folk tale time. Folk tale time, people. Folk tale time. Here we go. Here we go. Folk tale time. Folk tale time. The lark and her young ones. A lark had made her nest in the early spring on a young green wheat. The brood had almost grown to their full strength and attained the use of their wings and the full plumage of their feathers. When the owner of the field, looking over his ripe crop, said, The time has come when I must make all my neighbors help me with my harvest. One of the young larks heard his speech and related it to his mother, inquired to her to what place they should move for safety. There's no occasion to move yet, my son, she replied. The man who only sends to his friends to help him with his harvest is not really in earnest. The owner of the field came again a few days later and saw the wheat shedding the grain from excess of ripeness. He said, I will come myself tomorrow with my laborers and with as many reapers as I can and that I can hire and will get in the harvest. The lark on hearing these words said to her brood, it is time now to be off, my little ones, for the man is in earnest this time. He no longer trusts his friends, but will reap the field himself. Here's the moral. Self-help is the best help. Wow. Hope you get the message. Folk tales. Folk tales. Folk tales. Folk Folk tales. All right, found it's time for us to move to the rant of the day, the rant of the day. So, anime, can you get me ready, baby? Can you get me ready? Look like anime got me ready. Can I get the war horn, please? War horn sounds. War horn. Where my rain at? Can I get some rain? Thank you. Good grief. All right. Um, where was I at? Oh. Oh, we need to talk. Oh. Okay. Cool. Can I get my theme music? I ain't get my theme music yet. Anime. I've been up since three o'clock. Time to get thinking. We do more here at Giami Journey before sunrise than most people do all goddamn day. I know. I know somebody out there's like, relax, Tim, why you cuss so much? Because I'm tired. Y'all heard anime in the background. I'm tired. That's why. But anyway, but I'm not done yet. So the 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 rant for the day. I got my timer off clicking. The rant for the day is the five reasons to create life drills. Man, listen now. Where did this come from? So I'm sitting in class because you know, of course, I gotta get to get to work early. This is why I'm rushing. On these days, I gotta get to work. I gotta get to my adventure. I don't even like calling it work. I like to get to my adventure early. It's my adventure. It's my. It's it's one of my life. My it's part of my life mission because everything, like I told you, when you are in deep purpose, everything starts to line up. And I want I want more of us to experience this, right? More of us to experience this. Now, if if you have to do a whole bunch of different shit in different pockets, and they don't affect each other, family, you ain't on deep purpose. I'm just letting you know. I know some of you going to be mad at me. If you're doing a whole bunch of stuff, and you, as good as you are, if it's not in some form of fashion linking up, you might not be on deep purpose. But anyway, please don't be an empty man or empty woman, right? Valueless and all that shit out here. You definitely ain't one of those. One, one on deep purpose, but let me say this to you. So I'm sitting talking to my young people, going through a course that I am not really qualified to do, but because my family needs me, I will step up and do what the fuck I need to do. You understand what I'm saying? This is what a lot of people don't understand, right? When your family is in need, sometimes you might have to do. Y'all know Brother Hot Tim don't like doing shit around the house, but if I have to, I can. You know what I'm saying? With proper instructions. I could go, on, I could YouTube a video. I could go and figure out how to do some shit. When I need to do it, I could do it. I could call one of my friends to come over and give me guidance. I am very good, not only at being able to set out plans and even lead, 
but I'm also very good at being able to follow instructions and follow. You understand what I'm saying? So I can I could do multiple I could do multiple things, right? I choose not to do certain things, right? But anyway. My tribe called and I it was my responsibility to answer the call. You know what I'm saying? The gotten was thrown down and I took the challenge. So I'm sitting in the class with my young people. And the skills that I'm trying to get them on, I'm starting to notice that they don't have the, the fundamentals, right? Because they have not been drilled. For example, when I'm talking about the fundamentals, some of y'all that are close to my age, remember, y'all have to go through and do your multiplication tables and know your multiplication tables. I ain't just talking about, no, I'm just talking about like, when I throw it out there, if I say seven times eight, it, for some of y'all ain't no thought at all. You understand what I'm saying? There's absolutely no thought. I say seven times eight, there's no thought. I say seven times seven, there's no thought. Nine times seven, there's no thought. Why? Because you have drilled it so much. You have been drilled so much that when I say nine times seven, you own 63. What? I mean, it's almost natural, right? People often make fun of me because when they jump on and they say boo to me, I drop down into a Taekwondo stance. Even though I haven't practiced Taekwondo in oh, damn near 35, 40 years. You know what I'm saying? I don't drop down into to a capoeira move. I don't drop down into some jujitsu. I don't drop down into some... I drop down into a Taekwondo stance because I was drilled when I was young. I was drilled and I was drilled and I was drilled and I cried and I was drilled. I bled and I was drilled so that when something happens, I automatically go back to what I was trained, what I was drilled in doing. Now, I could do the other shit, but automatically, when it comes down, I'm dropping down into what was instilled into my spirit. What was instilled through my in, in my spirit through the physical means of the drill. Five reasons to create life drills is what I'm talking about today, family. And I want you to understand this, right? Because when you want to get good at something, right? You have to set up, once again, here we go. I want y'all to hear it. I want you to I want you to hear the words, a systematic process. Once you set up the systematic process, what that what that basically is, is drills that you could do. I have a drill that I have to do every morning when I get up and I have to get up and I have to create the write-up for my show. It started out with just first doing a write-up for the video that I post. Then it moved and expanded to the write-up for the people that I'm sending emails out that's on our email list to try to give them some inspiration, give them my idea of what I'm talking about, and maybe go a little bit more in depth. You know what I'm saying? Then it turned out, well, let me give people on the blog a sample. Right? Then it went to, well, I need to have a, a video write-up and a and an audio write-up. My drills led me to being able to do all this stuff, all this stuff. Between 4 o'clock and 5.45, my fault, and 6.45 every day. Drills. Drills allow you to practice so you get stuff ingrained. Whether we're talking about a physical activity, whether we're talking about an emotional activity, whether we're talking about a spiritual activity, whether we're talking about an intuitional activity, or whether we're talking about a mental activity. Family. On all five parts of your being, they all respond in the same way to drills. They get you ready so that you can react at the time. You don't have to think. See, this is this is the purpose of life drills. You want your life drills to be able to get you prepared so that when life hits, you don't even have to think. You know what to go to right away. When somebody jump out at me and say, boo, my front leg is ready to throw out a kick to get me some distance. My hands go up so that I can protect my neck, as they say with the Wu-Tang Clan. And my hand, front hand, is ready to throw a jab to also get me a little distance so I can figure out what's going on. Right? My left hand is ready so that I can also assist in the front hand strike as well as, boom, 
give me a little bit more time with my second blow. Well, actually, that'll be my third blow because my, my leg will be first. My arm that's in the lead, which is probably going to be my right hand, which is my strong hand. So it ain't going to just be a simple jab. And then my left hand to get me a little bit more time so I can see what's going on. See how many people coming at me. Drills. See, but I don't have to, I don't have to, I don't have to think about. Boom. Front, front kick. Right punch. That punch. No, it's happening. You see, on the football field, you see people responding. And it's because of the drills that go down. Same thing with basketball. Same thing in mathematics. Same thing in reading. Many of us have been drilled in reading so much that we don't even realize that when we run into words that we have problems with, we automatically go back onto the drills that we used to do when we was young. And we don't even realize it no more. We don't have to think about it no more. Drills help eliminate the energy and save you the time so that you don't have to go back and think about the practices that you need to go through. They happen automatically. And this is what setting drills do. So what I noticed when I was working with my young people is that they have not been drilled. So I would say seven times eight, and they have to be like, blah, 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 blah. No, you in the eighth grade. You should at least know your tables are seven. There should be no hesitation. There is no hesitation. No. So let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. I need to train you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you together on your drills so that when you start moving to the next level of mathematics, you don't have to think about some of the stuff that's easy. You just know it. You understand? So now, we are constantly talking about the quote, the best life is achieved when engaged in the systematic process. So let me say that again. Here on Giami Journey, we are constantly talking about the quote from the African openness to the tree of life. Here you go. Right? We got the rewrite by Sister Tara Hansen, African Deep Thought Workbook. Well, you can actually go on and go a little bit more in depth. The best life is achieved when engaging with systematic processes. But now, let's look at setting up this systematic process and why. To make it simple, the process that our ancestors used to describe is basically a drill. And a drill and a drill as a practice. I personally find that many people will spend hours studying and planning before finally putting anything into practice. This approach can be counterproductive because it doesn't put you in a position of testing your theories. Practice, practice, practice. And you, and you accentuate those practices, those engagements with real life adventures with drills. So that you ain't got the trend, so that you ain't got the thing. Now, here are some of the here are some of the benefits of the, uh, of drills. People are more likely to do something that they feel that their life depends on it. So when you are in real life, right? You go, you know what I'm saying? When you when you get hit by real life, in many cases your life depends on it, right? So when you drill, right, and the drills work you automatically going to fall back on the drills. You know what I'm saying? People who have trained in fighting don't necessarily curl up when they get hit. They are able to respond, not react. You want to be able to respond to life. You don't be able to, um, be able to um, you don't want to react. You want to respond. Oh, they threw, you ain't even got to think about it. They threw it, boom, you, you do the dip. And this is already up. I'm sorry. I didn't. I thought I forgot we was playing. You you ever run to somebody that's that's so trained that it's like that? Uh, it's like boom. Oh, I I forgot. I'm sorry. I, I snap. Or you jump out at somebody and it and and it's go. You understand what I'm saying? People are more likely to do something if they feel that their life depends on it. So when you practice the drills and you can practice drills to such a level that you put yourself up under the pressure. That life will present you, right? The best way for someone to learn something is by repetition. Drills. Repetitions over and over and over. I'm old. I can still drop down into a horse stance and hold it. 
I was I was watching a video where they talk about one of the best exercises to improve your life is the horse stance. And the dude was talking about, you know, I worked to hold my horse stance for five minutes. I said, five minutes? Five minutes? Tell me, Jones, bitch, please. Five minutes? I said, damn, I'm glad, boy. You so I'm so glad y'all ain't running to my, my masters, my instructors. Good God Almighty. Five minutes? <laughs> that was warm up. You know what I'm saying? The best way for someone to learn something by repetition. Doing it over and over again. And that's what drills allow you to do. You put yourself in high pressure situations over and over again. And you practice the skills that go along with it. You break down the skills. Drills make the process of achieving a goal automatic. So you don't have to work with it. You can, you, it's automatic. Number four, drills create confidence in yourself. In other words, you become more prepared for things that may come up in your life. Drills, by you practicing drills, and make you more confident. As a matter of fact, it stops you from worrying about the concept of confidence until afterwards. It's like, until you out of that situation, you're not even thinking about how you look. You're not even thinking. You you automatic. It's automatic. It's something that just takes over. It's sort of like, matter of fact, I'm going to give you an example that most people can associate with. Riding a bike. You don't think about pumping your knees and doing all the stuff it takes to balance the bike once you learn to do you. Now imagine if you was living your life like that. Right? Well, you could you could ride your bike, look at your phone, look around you and, and admire the beauty of the world, stay safe from cars, not run into people. You're not concerned about balancing the bike and maintaining how fast your legs move. All that shit is automatic. What happens when you get your life on this automatic process, fam? Last but not least, drills create habits. We constantly talk about that. Proper drilling create proper habits. Proper practice create proper, proper habits. And that's what we want to do. Now, I want to get to you, get those of you that are in the Gusaba challenge. I want to get y'all some other prompts. I gave you the things in advance, but let's give you some questions. Do you agree with the quote, the best life is achieved with engagement with systematic processes? Do you agree with that? And if so, why? What is your relationship with, the, with, with, with a systematic process? Do you have any systematic processes in your life? Have your teachers or your instructors or your coaches given you any systematic processes that you need to start following to improve who you are? What is a drill? Give me an example of a drill that you run in your life. Have you set up any drills in your life? Kind of repeat Peter the other question. What are your favorite studies or practices that you have done and why? And what drills can you associate with those? Do you think it's important to constantly test your theories? And last, what are some ways that you test your ideas? Mm -hmm. All right, family, this is Brother Hot Tim. Anime, did I do it, baby? Anime said I did it. I did it. Cool. So y'all know what it is. Y'all know what it is. Where we at? Come on now. Where, where we at? Mm-hmm. As we say in German class, it's missed. Now get the hell up out my classroom. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. All right, um, we going. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna send you away for a second. I'm gonna send you away. Here's your hall pass. Minute by minute. Minute by minute. Hour by hour. Hour by hour. You lose your history. You lose your history. You lose your power. You lose your power. Minute by minute. Minute by minute. Hour by hour. Hour by hour. Your better, and your better is your better.
almost perfect, almost perfect. It's a couple, a couple of seconds off, but here we go. Family, we lifting up our glass. We saluting our person. Uh, we're saluting our creator by whatever name you choose to call the creator. We're lifting up the glass, and we say the word of power around these parts. We say, Ashe, from there. Come on. Come on, we're lifting up to our personal ancestors, we're lifting up our personal ancestors, because we do every morning at 5.45 a.m. If you want to get your ancestors on list, get on an email list so that you can correspond with us. And in correspondence with us, you not only can send us your ancestors, when we ask you to be mindful of other people that want to add their ancestors as well, but you also can have questions for us, you can make comments, you can do whatever you want, and we could, we could communicate. I want to communicate with some of y'all, I want to talk with you. You want to have a taste with you. You understand what I'm saying? So we lift up our glass. We salute our personal ancestors as we do every morning at 5.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on all of our platforms. And we say, I say. From there, family, we lift up our glass. And we want to toast the moment, which is why we do this toast right here. We toast the moment. We lift up the moment, family. Understand that all of our power is in this moment. We have the ability to choose. We have the ability to make choices. And in making those choices, family, we decide in the sense the future of our people. Now, family, the question I'm asking you, asking you is, what are you doing with the future of our people? What are you doing with the future of your family? What are you doing with the future of your children? Hell, what are you doing with your future? Right? I'm just asking. You know, you ain't got the answer. Y'all can type in. Be mad if you want. You know what I'm saying? But just, what are you doing? Just think about it. Uh, for those that don't speak the language, right? Um, well, today we on Ujima. And um, I ask you, as I ask every day, open up your reticular formation, seek out Ujima. And those um, who are on the Guzzi Saba Challenge, those that are on the self, the uh, hashtag 224 self-help, self-help, um, Self-help system. I'm mess, I'm messing up. Two two four self-help process. Yeah, those that are involved in the um, hashtag two two four self-help process. Family, I ask you to, to to talk about your principle. I ask you to lift up the principle of Ujima. I'm asking you to uh, have conversations with it, share with other people. All right. So we lift up a glass. We toast this moment of Ujima. And in English, the closest we come to Ujima is collective work and responsibility. The modic principle is righteousness. The M7 for the day is respect. The color is blue. The vibration is, a uh, vibration is the hermetic principle. Male name is Kwaku. Female name is Akua. We're lifting up our glass. We salute and we say Ashe. From their family, we move to our children, our children's children. On to Fendi, we lift up our glass and we say Ashe. This ain't last. We're going to lift up all of those individuals in our tribe and our extended families that need that balanced healing energy. For those of you that want to add people to this list, you go through the same process that you would go through for um, adding ancestors. Get on that email list so that you correspond with us and you let us know who you want to add. So, family, I'm lifting up my glass to uh, we got Brother Quasi Low lifting up the glass. For Brother Quasi, we're lifting up the glass. For uh, um, Elder Tony West, we're lifting up our glass. For Elder Debbie Boy, and we say, Ashe. Last but not least, family, we started with the Creator. We end with the Creator. We say, Ashe. 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 Found out with you peace, power, joy, and 100 years. And we are out. Simple. And I will see you. If all, if all goes right, I will see you tomorrow. Ooh, okay, Clay. It's not dry, though. I don't know what this is called. I gotta, let me explore this taste for a minute. I'm gonna explore it off. <laughs> Mr. Diddy. <laughs>